Hello everyone! In this week's video, I'm drawing myself as video game characters. This is one of my favorite series because I get to work with different styles and also get to learn about new games that I hadn't played before. For this first drawing, I'll be drawing myself as a character in Sky Children of Light. I saw many of you suggesting this game and the style seemed very charming, so I thought I'd give it a try. If you have never heard of Sky Children of Light, it is an open world social adventure game. It was originally released on mobile, but it's now available on many platforms like PC, Switch, and so on. It's a free to play game that I've always wanted to try because of its style, but I just never got around to doing so. But since it was going to be a part of this video, I figured it'd be a good time to check it out. So I downloaded the game from Steam and started playing. I've actually been playing on my Nintendo Switch now, uh, but I do have to say I can definitely see the appeal of this game. The sound design and soundtrack is amazing and the visuals are very pretty. I often find myself just stopping and taking in the pretty scenery. Overall, the vibe of the game is very chill and relaxed and it has a very dream-like quality to it. Plus, I really like the little characters you be. I think they are very cute. When I showed them to my sister, she said they had potato faces and thought they looked kind of weird, which I can totally understand, but I personally think they are really cute. So for my design, I'm drawing myself as the same proportions as the characters you play as. I did consider drawing myself as a larger character, like the ancestors, but I wanted to go with something more cute since I do like the player character a lot. The characters often wear masks, it seems, and they often have holes where the eyes are and on the forehead, but not all the masks have ones on the forehead. For now, my mask has half circle shaped holes where the eyes are. I thought maybe this could help give my character the nervous expression I often draw the personification of me with. The character's outfits often include a good amount of fabric by the neck. I decided to have mine be a collar, since as many of you know, I like shirts of collars. For the cape, I looked at many different ones in the game, and I decided to take inspiration from this one. I really like the two-tiered look and the diamond embellishment. For now, the rest of the clothes will be pretty simple. I'm wearing a long sleeve dress with cuffs at the end of the sleeves, leggings, and a pair of flats. Now, I probably could have drawn myself in a more whimsical pose, but a part of me didn't mind the simplicity of the standing pose. It kind of felt like it gave the feeling I wanted, so I kept it. Now that my sketch is in place, I'm going to move on to coloring, and you might be thinking, Becca, what about the line art? And well, for this piece, I'm going to go with a kind of lineless look. So instead of going on to line art like I usually do, I'll be drawing in the shapes of color. For my design, I wanted to incorporate a lot of blues and teals, since teal's often the color I go to when drawing myself, since it's my favorite color, I think. <laughs> I kind of tend to go back and forth between all the colors, but teal is always pretty consistent. A lot of times the player characters have more of a warm feeling to them, however there are masks that are blue and have a cool glow to the eyes to them rather than a warm glow, so I decided to draw inspiration from those. Also, since I wear glasses, I will be adding those in as well, and glasses are an accessory you can unlock in the game, so it is possible for them to wear them. For the hair, I'll be drawing it similar to the style I have in real life. I turned on the effect that adds an outline to the shape I draw. Since the player characters do have white hair, I wanted to outline it a bit so it's easier to see. From what I know, white is the only hair color, so my character will follow that rule. As I was looking at the face, I felt like my character looked too depressed, <laughs> so I decided to go with circle eyes instead. To make the circles look like they are more embedded into the mask, I added some dark color to some of the edges of them. Uh, to make them feel like they have an edge. I noticed that some masks had markings painted on them, so to help add some expression, I'll add an eyebrow shape to one of the eyes. I only added it to one eye because I thought it would help the mark to feel more like a mark and less like eyebrows, but later to help keep balance, I did add a tear shape under the other eye. Yeah, my character does still look kind of sad and depressed, <laughs> but I like this more than before, so that's good I suppose. Now, even though I technically only had to try Sky a little bit for the purposes of making this video, I do have to say I actually do really like it and I have been playing it a bit in my free time. It's a nice simple game to relax with. The gameplay is pretty simple. Basically, you kind of just walk around, find ancestor spirits, relive their memories, get rid of the bad stuff with your candle, and repeat. I do find a lot of the game so far for me is just adventuring the overworld. And even though all you're technically doing is walking around, finding things, and lighting candles, it's still really enjoyable, mostly because the environments are really pretty, and like I said, the music and sound design are also really well done. The game overall just has a really nice atmosphere. 
Now this may sound funny because this is an online game made to be played with others, but my least favorite part probably is that there are other players around me as I'm going through the environments. I'm not a huge fan of online multiplayer games, mostly because I'm not very social. <laughs> I don't know, it's a bit fun when you see other players running around you and they are kind of going through the same stuff you're doing. But at the same time, whenever a player tries to interact with me, I get a bit flustered and I just want to do things on my own. Or like I don't totally know what I'm doing when they run up to me and I'm like, okay, what am I supposed to do? <laughs> like one player befriended me and we like grabbed hands or something and they were the leader. So I had to just go with what they were doing. But like I kind of wanted to do my own thing and this player kind of seemed like they didn't really know what they were doing and they were kind of lost because like I knew what I needed to do but they didn't really seem like they knew what they needed to do. Uh, but I also didn't want to be rude and just leave them. <laughs> I wish there were more options to have other people around but if you wanted to be on your own that's also an option. Kind of like in Mario Wonder. I actually really like the online mode in Wonder. I thought I wouldn't really use it, but it's actually pretty fun, especially for the puzzle levels where people are trying to help each other without the ability to actually talk to each other. We only have signs, little emojis, and moving around. It's very entertaining. <laughs> Anyways, back to the art. We have a lot of the coloring finished and I added a starry square to fill in the background and I felt like I was nearly done. However, the values of this picture were feeling kind of off and all of the white of my outfit felt kind of dull. So I spent some time playing around with different colors. I thought maybe I could make my dress a dark blue. However, then it blends into the cape and I liked the idea of the cape having the starry texture on the inside of it. So I kind of wanted to keep that. So I kept trying things and I randomly changed my dress to a kind of gold color to match the embellishment on my cape. And I quite liked this. It added another color to the design and I feel like this helped things feel more interesting. To add a bit more interest, I added some geometric designs to the background and added this design to my outfit as well. I feel like this helped things feel a little less blank. So here's me as a character in Sky Children of Light. Thank you to all of you who suggested this game to me. It's a very relaxing game and I look forward to spending more time with it. The characters are really cute and I love all the different outfit options. I just need to unlock them. <laughs> Before we continue drawing, it's time for a mini tablet review. This time we are taking a look at the UG UE12+. Plus. This tablet features an 11.9 inch FHD fully laminated anti-glare screen and provides a zero parallax drawing experience. It also has a scroll wheel and 8 shortcut keys. Setting up the tablet was super easy, I just had to plug it in, install the drivers to my PC, and it was good to go. This tablet has two ways that you can plug it in. If your PC offers full USB-C support, you can simply use the provided USB-C cable. But if your PC does not have USB-C support, there's an option of using a 3-in-1 cable. Also, if your Android device supports USB-C, you can even plug it into that. Along with the tablet, we of course have the pen and it features two customizable hotkeys, 60 degrees of tilt recognition, and 8192 levels of pressure sensitivity. I have to say this tablet is a very nice option for beginners or for people that have a tight budget. The UE12 Plus is currently only $159 on the UG website. For a tablet with a screen, this is a great entry level price. It makes it even more beginner friendly since it can be used with some Android devices. My experience with the tablet was very good. It was responsive and worked right away without any issues. I did notice a little bit of lag with the pen, but it wasn't very noticeable while I was working. This tablet is on the smaller side, so it may not be for everyone. But if you want a tablet with a screen that is more portable or won't take up a lot of room, this may be a good option for you. If you're interested in checking out this tablet for yourself, there are links in the description and pinned comment down below. Thank you so much again to UG for sponsoring this video. The next game I'll be making myself in the style of is Gotcha Life 2. I saw some of you suggesting this. I did create myself as a Gotcha Club character in this video, but Gotcha Life 2 recently came out and has new features and stuff. So let's check it out. When I opened the app, I was greeted by Charlotte and she kind of tells me the basics of where things are. If you don't know, Gotcha Life is basically a dress up game where you can design characters. It has a lot of customization options and from what I've heard, this one has even more options. The first thing I am noticing is that there are a ton of character slots, so that's really cool. So I select a blank character to make my own and before we get too far into the process, I wanted to see if I could change the screen to be horizontal. Thankfully I can. This works much better for YouTube videos. 
Okay, so first let's start with the body. I can change the width and height to my liking. I'm decently tall, so I'll try to make my character a little on the tall side. Next, I want to adjust the skin tone, and wow, there are color sliders now. Before, you would just have to pick from the color palette, but now you can make whatever color you want, so that's really cool. I made my skin tone a little bit more yellow since my skin is more of an olive tone. There are a lot of different head shape options. I went through all of them and decided to go with number 22 because I thought that one was pretty cute. There are also a lot of ear options, and I like how the animal ears get rid of the human ears now so you don't have two sets of ears. I went with really basic ears since I'm just a human. <laughs> Next we move on to the face and I'm trying to decide which eye shape I want to use. I'm going to be honest, when I saw the eyes, I didn't really like how the lines were all so thick. It made the character feel like they were wearing a lot of eye makeup. Thankfully, I did eventually learn that you can turn the outline off. So I ended up doing that much later in the process. I decided to go with eye shape 75 since it felt like the best option at the moment. Something else that is really cool about Gotcha Life 2 is that you can now move a lot of the different parts around. This offers the ability to make things more how you like it and it's really nice. For the irises, I went with option 11. It's just kind of a simple iris that gets darker to lighter and I changed the colors to match my eye color. Now I did a lot of adjusting to the eyes and irises to make them how I want. This was kind of a long and tedious process, so we're going to speed up the footage a lot. Also, I decided to change my eye shape to number four. I felt like that maybe I liked this one a little bit more. For the pupils, I went with an oval shape, made them black, and adjusted the placement. I have to say I do really love the ability to adjust things. You could do this in Gotcha Club, but not to this extent. I also really like that the highlights are their own option. That's really nice. That being said, having this many options with the ability to adjust did make me much more nitpicky <laughs> and this process took much longer than I anticipated. I was like, yeah, I'll probably get this done in like an hour or less. So it'll be super easy. And then I ended up spending like two and a half hours making this character. It took so long. <laughs> As usual for my expression, I tried to go with something that looked kind of nervous. Also, I really like the art style of Gotcha Life 2. It's still similar to the other games, but I do feel like the characters look really cute. I've heard some people don't really like the cuter style, and I can understand that, but I obviously really like it. <laughs> For the clothes, I'll make myself wear my usual teal sweater. I really liked how I now have the option to adjust the length of the shirt. I was able to make the sweater more baggy feeling. For the pants, we have basic blue jeans. Nothing too special here. And for the shoes, I went with these ones that have laces. I was trying to keep this character close to my first one I made, but I was trying to also make it a bit different to take advantage of the new features and items if I could. One simple thing I added that I thought was really cute is I added some soft blush to the cheeks, but I also shrunk down this soft circle shape to add some blush to my nose. I love adding nose blush to my characters, so I was really happy I could add this. There were options of blush with blush on the nose, but I wanted to be able to like perfectly tweak it to match where my nose was uh, so that's why I did it this way. Next was the glasses. For some reason I could just not find the glasses. I did find a pair in the other section on the first page for the head but for some reason I somehow never went to the second page for the head and that's where the glasses were. <laughs> I figured there would be more glasses options than just the one pair that I found. Next was the hair and oh my goodness this took way too long. I could have just went with the same style I did in Gotcha Club, but a part of me really wanted to try going with something a little different. So I was trying a bunch of different stuff and I was trying my best to make the different parts work together. But in the end, I just went with basically the same hairstyle I did before. I felt a little sad about this, but at the same time, I do like it, so it's okay. Lastly, I wanted to make my character hold a pencil and a book like I did with my first character. But for some reason, I could not get the book to go in front of my character's hand that's on our right. I tried playing around with all the different layer options, but none of the different combinations I tried worked. All of them would move both objects in front of the hands or both objects behind the hands. But I wanted the pencil to be behind and the book to be in front. But yeah, I just couldn't get it to work, so I'm only going to hold the pencil. I'm sure I'll get a bunch of comments being like, you just need to press this button, you stupid. <laughs> if I get anything wrong when I do these gotcha related topics, the gotcha fans tend to get very angry at me. Uh, so please go easy on me, I'm trying my best. But anyways, here's me as a character in Gotcha Life 2.
In the video where I did a gotcha club character, I did edit the character some. Uh, but for this one, I didn't really feel the need to edit it at all. I feel like it looks okay as it is. Gotcha Life 2 does have a ton of options, but all of the options does make it a bit confusing. That being said, it was a lot of fun to play around with, and the art style is very cute. For the last game, I'm going to draw myself as a character in Cuphead. Cuphead has been a long requested style for me to draw myself in, but I hadn't done it before because I hadn't played the game. But a few months ago, I started playing the game with my husband, and I do really like the art style of the game. If you don't know, Cuphead is a classic run and gun action game heavily focused on boss battles, and is inspired by the cartoons of the 1930s. The animation for the characters, bosses, and environments are all so well done, and it's very charming. The main character is Cuphead, along with him are Mugman and Miss Chalice. I will be basing my design heavily off of their designs, and since all the characters have cup-like objects for their head, I decided to go with a teacup for mine. I went with a teacup because it's a cup that feels girly, plus with it having a rim around the bottom, I can make this look a bit like a short collar. For a little bit I was thinking of not adding glasses since I thought it might take away from the face or add a bit too much to it or make me look like a grandma. <laughs> but then I decided to go with a way of stylizing glasses where the glasses and eyes are kind of one thing. I don't often do this but since this is a very cartoony style I figured I could do this here. All of the characters have a straw that come out of their cups. I thought a straw felt a bit out of place for a teacup so I decided to go with a spoon instead. For my colors, I will mostly use teal, white, and black. I will add some pink circles to the cheeks for blush. Now that I've figured out the design a bit, I will sketch out this design for a more finished piece where my character is in more of a pose. I wanted to make sure that the pose I drew this character in conveyed the personality, but also matched the era of the art style. Miss Chalice is drawn in poses that remind me a lot of early Minnie Mouse drawings, so I actually took inspiration from a lot of older Minnie Mouse art. Also, I did decide to draw my character with a longer skirt. Miss Chalice wears a skirt very much like Minnie Mouse's skirt, and you can see her bloomers. But I feel like I would opt to wear a longer skirt instead. For the art rendering, I wasn't sure if I should go with something closer to the box art, or something closer to the art within the game itself. In the game, the art looks like you took it from a vintage cartoon, but the box art feels a little bit more sharp and clean. I decided to go with the box art style since that felt a little simpler to do. Something I did consider for this video is designing myself as a Cuphead boss with a stage and everything. I thought this sounded like a cool idea, but also very overwhelming. And honestly, I wasn't sure if I would be able to mimic the style of the game. It's just so well done. So I decided to keep things simple and just draw myself as a Cuphead character and not a boss. I didn't know much about Cuphead before my husband showed it to me. I watched him fight a few bosses and he offered for me to play with him and it is a very challenging game for sure. Some of the bosses aren't too bad uh, but some of them are so hard to beat. I think the one that gave me and my husband the most trouble was the green dragon. We had to try so many times to beat him and we kept losing during the final phase. Once we did finally beat him. We kind of stopped playing the game and we haven't gone back since. <laughs> it's kind of funny because like the bosses are so hard and so annoying, but it feels so good to slowly get better and better. And you feel so awesome when you finally beat the boss. It's kind of a similar feeling I would have when playing Hollow Knight or Metroid Dread. The bosses are so hard, but once you win, it feels so awesome. I remembered when we beat the dragon, my husband and I were so relieved and also so tired, <laughs> but like all we did was play a video game. Overall, drawing in the Cuphead style didn't give me too much trouble. The liner was very clean and had subtle line variation, but not too much. And the colors are all just flat colors, so I only had to fill them in. So here's me in the style of Cuphead. Working in this very cartoony style was super fun, and I enjoyed designing this character way more than I thought I would. And I had a lot of fun working with all the different styles in this video and trying some new games. If you have any suggestions you'd like to see in future videos like this, please leave a comment down below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, it'd help it out a lot if you could subscribe, give it a thumbs up, maybe share it with some friends. It truly helps out the channel a ton. Speaking of supporting the channel, thank you so much to my awesome YouTube members and Patreon patrons for their support. It means so much to me. And thank you for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you all next week in my next video. Bye!